Kings chapter 5, uh, we left off at verse 7, <clears throat> so I'm just going to read down, continue reading from the from the beginning, uh, that way we can uh, cover everything, we should be able to get through this whole thing hopefully uh, today, uh, yeah, uh, and we're talking about Naaman's leprosy being healed, uh, it says, now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had uh, brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. For... He would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus, and said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Uh, then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, uh, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, now, be advised when this letter comes to you that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you that you may heal him of his leprosy. Uh, and that's where we really left off. <clears throat> so uh, here we see that the king, uh, that, well, we know that uh, Naaman was the commander of the army of Syria and he was well, well regarded by the king, right? Because the king uh, knew that he had leprosy and wanted to help heal him. And whenever it came to him uh, via... Uh, um, Naaman that uh, his servant had said uh, this young girl that they had captured on a raid uh, who was from Israel had said that uh, if only he could see uh, the prophet that was over in Israel um, that uh, she knew uh, could heal him uh, so uh, Naaman took this information uh, to the king and the king sent him away with uh, all this money the last, uh, the other day when we were uh, searching through these these uh, uh, verses, we noticed that it was in today's time would have been approximately one point two million dollars uh, of value is what he sent away with Naaman to uh, go to the Israel king. Uh, but what happened? Uh, I don't think we got that far, so I'll, I'll continue reading. I was going to ask this question, but anyway. It says, And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive and that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So we notice here that the king of Israel is not taking it too lightly, is he? He's like, hold on here. You know, am I God? What, what, what's, he, he's, what's his uh, angle? You know, what's his angle here? Is he want to... Want to start a fight or something? Or well, the first king should have put the prophet of God in the letter that he sent to him, and then the king of Israel should have been his first thought was, mm -hmm. "Oh, this needs to go to the prophet of God." Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit of miscommunication there, right, Jackie? Yeah. So the king of Syria should have, like you said, made it known that he was sending Naaman on behalf of himself to see the prophet of Israel, uh, which was in that king's uh, kingdom. So, uh, therefore, the king uh, of Israel would have been at a loss and uh, wouldn't have been like, oh, hold on now, what's he want to do? Uh, is this something that he thinks that, uh, you know, is going to start up some trouble? <clears throat> so, verse 8, so it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Okay? So now it's all making sense, right? Elijah's like, he saw it right off the bat. He's like, oh, he don't want to see you. He wants to see me. That's who he needs to see. He needs to come see me, right? So... Then Naaman went to uh, went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash 
in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abna and the far, far, the, uh, the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. So what do we see happening here? Pride. Pride. Yeah. Pride got in his way, in Naaman's way, didn't he? You yeah. know, pride got in the Naaman's way. He's like, you know what? Uh, surely he'd have came out to me. You know, why, why is it that I got to go to him? But he wanted a big show. Absolutely. He, he wanted the circumstance. Absolutely. So, and where else do we see that? How often would you, did we see that back in those days with what? The Sadducees and Pharisees. Pharisees. Well, right? well, they wanted to make it a big show. All the time. And how about today's time? Today's <coughs> big light show. It hadn't changed, has it, Ralph? Uh, today's uh, pastors, the pros prosperity preachers, they have the big show and uh, they have all this the stuff where they do the little healing things and stuff like that, uh, and you know it's all a show. Um, so Amen or say it or whatever they call it or something like we, that. We know that God will take care of those pastors. Yeah. Uh, and it says, uh, verse thirteen, and his servant came near and spoke to him and said, "My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean?" Uh, so he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child and he was clean so the servant made sense didn't he he's like well you know come on now you know let's be real you know if he had told you to go out and do something that you know was outrageously crazy that would bring you you know would bring great honor upon you you'd go do it wouldn't you well, of course he would, you know, because like Jackie said, he was looking for a, for a show, for, oh, look at me, you know, uh, he was very prideful, you know, where he said, you know, hey, how about these two rivers? They're much, much uh, better rivers than the River Jordan in Israel, you know, so, but we see what he do after the, after the servant told him this, he kind of humbled himself, didn't he? Well, it wasn't really the water mm. that cleansed him. It was that, that faith. act of faith, faith. going and doing it that right. cleansed him. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we know... There was the power of God. Right. Yeah. Absolutely the power of God. But we know that, you know, at first, it's like, you know, Jackie was saying, we know that it wasn't the water. But didn't he mention in there that weren't the waters of these two other rivers much cleaner than the Jordan? You know, so I don't know, you think one of the chemicals that God used to help. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, the minerals or whatever that might have been in the waters or the rocks or something. You know, uh, <laughs> like that time I got stung by a bunch of true yellow jackets, the ones in the ground. <laughs> right. And uh, my leg was on fire, and she was like, "Well, we're gonna go to the river." So as soon as they got the river, it was gone. Wow. I mean, the pain, the swelling, everything was like. No. Right, right. A lot of the times we, when it when it comes to pride, people that are prideful, we those kind of people want it in their zone and in their territory, and that's not the way it actually works. It goes back to the Word of God, where you know, and things like that. Uh, messages back, you know, stories that we, we can revert back to in the Bible to teach us those individual things in a spiritual sense that we can gain the knowledge from these past stories to reflect. Right. Well, I know uh, it said that Naaman went away in a rage. Mm -hmm. you know, so he was kind of upset, wasn't he? It says because his expectations of how God should work was crushed. It was totally different than, you know, uh, what he expected. Uh, said, uh, what did he say? Uh, Naaman wanted nothing to do with Elisha. Uh, if the answer was uh, in washing in a river, Naaman knew where there were better rivers in his own land, you know, so. But if Elisha came out 
and met with him, well then he would be given the glory to Elisha because Elisha is the one who told him to do it. But since and Elisha was, would have been the one who put his hands over the spots of the leprosy and it would have disappeared. So he'd have thought that everything came from Elisha and not God. Absolutely. Jackie, you're on the right, yeah. right train of thought every time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the prophet uh, said, the prophet had told you, uh, notice where the servants came near and spoke to him and said, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you have done it? Said so the servants of Naaman used a brilliant, brilliantly logical approach. Uh, if Elisha had asked Naaman to sacrifice a hundred or a thousand animals to God of Israel, Naaman would have done it immediately. Yet because he his request was easy to do and humbling, Naaman first refused. You know, so mm. noticed. Uh, I, I noticed that one of the things that uh, um, Brother Billy and I talked about this morning when when I first came in was uh, the fact uh, that in God's eyes He wants us to be humble. You know, and. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny that him and I were talking about that humbling experience this morning, and then here we are with Naaman having to be humble uh, and do the things that the uh, prophet had told him to do mm -hmm. according to God's will and not Naaman's will, you know. Uh, <clears throat> said Naaman did exactly what Elisha told him. Therefore, uh, we can say that each dunk in the Jordan was a step of faith, trusting in the word of God through his prophet. Uh, and this is what Jackie was uh, commenting on earlier, mm -hmm. uh, just a few minutes ago. <clears throat> because he did follow what the prophet said, mm -hmm. so therefore God got the God got the glory and not Elisha the prophet. Uh, just like Jackie said, if Eli if Elisha would have came to Naaman and then did all the things to remove the leprosy, then more than likely Naaman would have put all of his uh, all of that faith not into God but into the the actions of the prophet, you know, of Elijah. Uh, um, let's see. So, uh, Naaman's response of faith uh, was generously rewarded. God answered uh, his faith with complete and miraculous healing. Uh, <clears throat> so, we're going to continue on there. And it says, uh, verse 15, it says, And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him, and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Okay, so Naaman said, then, if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offerings or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the temple of Rimen to work, uh, to worship there, and he leans on my hand, I bow down in the temple of Rimon. When I bow down in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in these thing, in this thing. Then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a short distance. But okay, Gehazi, I know I'm saying that wrong, okay. Gah, yeah, Gehazi is <laughs> Yeah, but Gehazi the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian while not receiving from his hands that what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazi uh, pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well, but my master has sent me, saying, Indeed, uh, just now two young men of the, of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them uh, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. So Naaman said, Please take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags, 
with two changes of garments and handed them to the two of his servants and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, to he took them from in their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master. Elijah said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. What's going on? Uh, so then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? It is time to receive uh, is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vi uh, vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous as white as snow. Woo! Baby. Mm -hmm. So, big consequence there, right? Yep. Big consequence. Most like that uh, story about Jericho, and then they tried to hurt, tried the one of the soldiers tried to hold on, uh, and then bury in the ground a, a purple wool uh, garment, and didn't tell. Uh, yeah. Well, Elijah didn't say pay much. That way, Naaman couldn't say, uh, "I paid you." Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Exactly right. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and also, uh, <clears throat> Elisha wanted God to get all the glory. Yeah, you know? Exactly right. Uh, it says, and he returned, uh, a rent, returned to the man of God. <clears throat> this was a fine display of gratitude, wasn't it, from Naaman? Uh, it says, Naaman was like the one leper out of the ten Jesus healed who came back to, to thank Jesus. And this is what Brother Billy was just talking about. Uh, in uh, Luke chapter 17, uh, verse 12 uh, through 19, where it says, then he entered a certain village. Uh, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And, it, and so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was, he was healed, returned with, and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, uh, where were, uh, were there not ten cleansed? And where are the nine? Where there not any, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? So he was also a foreigner like the one uh, thankful leper as well, right? Uh, Naaman was a foreigner. Yeah. So uh, uh, it says, before Naaman expected the prophet to come to him, now he returned to the man of God and stood, and stood before Elisha, right? Uh, it says, um, uh, it wasn't just the healing that persuaded Naaman uh, of this. It was the healing connected with the word of the prophet. Together, this was convincing evidence to Naaman that uh, the God Elisha represented was the one true God of all the earth. Uh, and he mentions that, didn't he? Came back and told Elisha, you know, that he, now he knew that there was only one true God and it was in Israel. Uh, and, and that Elijah served him. Uh, but again, like Jackie said, Damon wanted to give him a gift, though, didn't he? It says, uh, please take this gift from your servant. Uh, so we can say that Damon only meant well by his gesture. He felt it was appropriate to support the ministry of this man of God, whom the Lord had used to great, uh, so greatly to bring healing upon him. You know, upon him. However, Elisha steadfastly insisted that he would receive nothing from Naaman. Mm -hmm. Well, that can be interpreted two ways, right? There. That oh. says he was doing it, but he could have been doing it for sure again. And and uh, and it's like and, and Elijah wouldn't have had the show. That's right. No. Elijah wasn't putting forth the show. He was doing the true work of God. Is that right? Uh, exactly. Uh, he wouldn't have been on the stage when he you know, told him he, he stayed in his house and sent the messenger. Right, he sent the messenger out to Naaman. Absolutely. So he, was, 
he was uh, not taking any of the glory, but you know, giving it to Trump. Yes, absolutely. Uh, says um, on this part right here, what is what? Did, what did it mean? Where Naaman said uh, to Elisha, "Let your servant be given two mule loads of earth." What do you think he meant by that? He wanted to take it back to his country. Israel. Anybody else? It's a good answer, Roger. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, like many new believers, Naaman was uh, superstitious in his faith. Mm -hmm. He held the common opinion of the ancient world that particular deities had power over particular places. He thought that if he took a piece of Israel back with him to Syria, yeah. he would better worship the God of Israel. So he was kind of superstitious in that way that mm -hmm. whenever he went into the tent, if he had, you know, had this earth down there, then he would be worshiping God instead of worshiping the little G God that his masters were worshiping. Baal or whoever Baal or Baal or it was, Baal. absolutely. Because uh, he says, what did he say? He says, when I bow down to the temple of Ryman, uh, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. He says, as an official in the government of Syria, Naaman was expected to participate in the worship of the Syrian gods. He asked Elijah for allowance to direct his heart to God even when he was in the temple of Ryman. And, uh, and did, did Elisha do so? Did Elisha grant that? Because he knew his stature inside the government of Syria? Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. It says, uh, it says the Hebrew lean on the hand does not uh, imply physical support, but that he was the right hand, uh, the king's right hand man. Yeah. In other words, you know, when the king would go in, he would go in. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, we see here that, that Elisha told Naaman to go in peace, right? Mm. He says, by generally approving, but not saying specifically yes or no, it seems that Elisha left the matter up to Naaman and God. <coughs> Perhaps he trusted that the Lord would personally convict Naaman of, his, of this and give him the integrity and strength to avoid idolatry. So, basically... Naaman didn't tell him yes that the Lord would um, allow him to do so and he didn't tell him no but he again left that up to the Lord in other words uh, the prophet Elisha was not speaking for the Lord you know this is something that he would have had to went to the Lord again in uh, direct favor of Naaman to ask of, of God this question uh, and I'm sure at that point in time, uh, the way God was using uh, Elisha to heal uh, Naaman, then he probably would have given him an answer. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and more than likely it would have been uh, no. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just saying that that's what I, I believe. Uh, nevertheless, we see uh, the greed of Gehazi, right? Uh, Gehazi, he. He went on ahead and mm -hmm. got greedy and then lied about it too, right? Mm -hmm. do, do we do we see that happening now or do we do that? I mean oh, you yeah. it all across through the our lifetime, have we? All I know across I have. the generations you see. Uh, Oh, absolutely. It says, by Gehazia, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master uh, has spared Naaman the Syrian while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. So Gehazia hmm. uh, pursued Naaman. And, you know, when Gehazia was coming towards Naaman, Naaman was like, Oh, whoa, something, whoa, everybody stop. Hmm. You know? You know, maybe something's wrong. And he asked Gehazia, is all well? You know, is there something else that, that uh, you know, Elisha might have thought of that he didn't tell me, you know? So he wanted to stop and see what was going on, right? Why was this mm -hmm. servant of Elisha mm -hmm. chasing after him, right? He was a servant of Elisha. He wasn't a servant mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Amen, sister. You got it. Mm -hmm. 
Because if he had been a servant of God, guess what? He wouldn't have done it. 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 But if he was looking after looking himself, yeah. absolutely. If he was a true, uh, true. person of the prophet, mm. he wouldn't have done it either. Right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Gehazi heard Naaman and Elijah speak, and he was shocked that his master refused to take anything from such a wealthy, influential, and grateful man. He figured that someone should benefit from such an opportunity. And he took the initiative and ran after Naaman and took something from him, didn't he? <coughs> it says, Gehazi thought that Elijah deserved a reward. Uh, and how do you know that he thought that? Because he said what? Somebody should get something. Yeah, absolutely. He said, my master spared Naaman and somebody should take something from this man. You know, he's willing to give it. He's got it. He didn't think his master deserved it. He thought he did. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. He said, if he's not going to take it, then somebody should get it. In his mind. Somebody should get something. Yeah. He did in his mind, not his heart. And, uh, and, and what happened when Jehazi asked for one talent? He got him two because he, he was so yeah. appreciative. He was so appreciative and so thankful of uh, the miracle that God allowed Elijah to do for him, he gave him two mm. talents. So, you know, instead of one. Uh, How much is a talent? <laughs> this says that, uh, this says, the, and the fact that he handed uh, them uh, to two of the servants shows that he was, uh, this was a lot of silver. It required two servants to carry those, uh, these two talents. For according to the comp, uh, computation above, each mm-hmm. talent was about 120 pounds of silver. Of silver. Mm-hmm. So 120 pounds of silver today. Whoa! Be <laughs> <laughs> like a <laughs> That would sorry. certainly pay off my house and, and more. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so we see also that uh, that he says stored them away in the house, right? So when they got back, Gehazi did what? He hid them. He hid them. Yeah. Why did he hide them? He knew what right. right. He knew it wasn't right, right? He knew it wasn't right. right. He stored them away in the house. He deliberately hid them from Elijah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Gehazi knew that he what? He did wrong. He knew that he did wrong, so he hid them. Mm-hmm. You know, but those things that are in the darkness shall be brought to the light. You know. You know when Elijah came and asked him, it's kind of like when your brother comes and asks something. She already knows the answer. You might as well just tell the truth. Amen. I mean, right, right. I, it took me a long time and a lot of knots to realize that. But uh, guess what? After a while, whenever my mom used to call me up. Uh, I just was like, yes, ma'am. I was tired of hearing that bell swing through the air for a while. <laughs> Only Julia's story about switch off the tree. Yes, yes. Oh, no. that's a good, that's I used to be right like this, you know, like this one? No. I want this one, not that one either. That one, you know. <laughs> All right. So uh, now we also see that uh, that he lied to uh, he lied to Elisha, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And when he lied to Elisha, Elisha said, "What did not my heart go with you?" Right? So, you know, this man was working for Elijah, and uh, he knew that Elijah was a prophet of uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, and was a true prophet, not a false prophet. So it's like Jackie said, it's almost like going to your mom, and your own mom already knows, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but he he. He did like a stubborn little child, didn't he? And he was like, yep, he lied. Says Elisha knew. Uh, says we don't know if this was supernatural knowledge or a simple gain from observation and knowing that God easy is knowing God easy is character. Uh, one way or the other, Elisha knew. And it says all Gehazi's attempt to cover uh, his sin failed. Uh, says it seems that Elisha had uh, no absolute law against receiving support from those who were touched by his ministry. Yet, uh, 
it was spirit, spiritually clear that uh, to Elisha and should have been clear to Ahaziah that it was not appropriate at this time and for this type of circumstance for them to receive money, you know. Mm -hmm. It says, money, clothing, olive groves, and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants. Obviously, Tahizia did not bring all of these things home with him from Naaman, yet he wanted all of these things. And Elisha exposed his greedy heart by saying, not just money, but all the rest of the things that he could have brought home. Uh, he knew that these were the type of things that Gehazia sought after. So more than likely, he knew mm -hmm. he knew Gehazia's character. Mm -hmm. You know, very much. Uh, says therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. This is what this is what uh, Elisha had told Gehazia, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, that's a that's a pretty hard harsh penalty for uh, lying to the prophet of God, wasn't it? Pretty hard. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think not. You know why? Because the Lord could have struck him dead. You know? So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to finish this up right quick. It says, This was a severe judgment, but as a man in ministry, Gehazia was under a stricter judgment. When he allowed himself to covet sure. what Naaman had, he thought only in terms of the money Naaman possessed. God allowed him to keep the riches, but also gave him the other... Uh, gave him the other thing Naaman had, severe leprosy. And uh, also, where else do we see money getting uh, getting the best of someone uh, that was really close to the Lord Jesus Christ? Judas? Judas. Judas Iscariot. 30 talents silver. The 30 talents silver. The man and the wife, I can't think of Yeah, the man and the wife uh, where they bought the land. Absolutely. We're the rich guys saying, so uh, "How can I get? How can I get into heaven?" To the point, you know, even though he's rich, he, you know. Yeah, I know that's He was looking at the physical sense. Absolutely. He came to the physical sense. Uh, finishing up. Uh, Gahizia is not the uh, last who has got money in an awful way, and has God and God cursed it. Uh, says we see here a pagan. Uh, we see here a pagan who, by an act of faith is cured of leprosy, and an Israelite who by the act of dishonor is cursed with it. So, good chapter. Very good chapter. Uh, you know, so uh, a lot of action in this one. And uh, anybody got any uh, questions on what we just covered? Uh, I, I really like that. I really like that chapter. I like this one in particular because a lot, there's a lot of other stories in the Bible you can relate back to that as a key examples to this one. Uh, moreover, just as they all connect in, in the same preference of what God is teaching us in the Bible today. Absolutely. Uh, we're, next week, uh, we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 6, talking about the floating axe head. Uh, so you guys uh, read on, uh, get familiar with that chapter, because you know I'm going to ask you some questions. Mm. And, uh, you know, I really like, if you guys feel like we need to uh, to do a little something different in this class, mm. please bring it to my attention. Uh, I know that uh, I, I get a lot out of it, and I uh, hope you guys do. Um, mm. But if there's no questions, anybody got any questions or anything else you want to add? Brother Billy added some stuff. Uh, if not, uh, Brother Frank, close us in a word of prayer, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you once again to yes, thank sir. you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this message that's been brought. Yes, Lord. We yes, sir. ask once again that you put your hand upon the spoken and the unspoken prayer of the Lord, and be with us as we go into the main service, Lord, the song service. And Preaching afterwards. Yes. We say as we go our separate place. Yes, bring us back to the point of God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.